Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the month of October from worst to best. If you are not familiar with the makeup industry, October is a huge month for holiday releases and it's showing in the amount that I have to talk about. So if you want to see what comes out on top, then just keep watching. Before we head into it, I just want to say a huge thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this portion of today's video. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you know that I work with Ana Luisa quite a lot because they are one of my go-to jewelry places. I would say in every one of my videos, I tend to be wearing at least one piece from Ana Luisa. Today's video, I am all decked out in some of my most recent favorites from Ana Luisa. I'm going to go through each and show you them individually as well. If you aren't familiar with Ana Luisa though, in my humble opinion, they have some of the best jewelry pieces while keeping it at a still pretty affordable price for how long they last. I've been working with Ana Luisa for I want to say a year and a half now and not one piece that I've gotten from them has broken. Everything is still in tip-top condition. None of the colors fade. They don't turn my neck green or anything crazy like that. And they don't irritate my ears. That's a big thing for me. If I wear jewelry for too long, it can very easily irritate my sensitive ears. And Ana Luisa jewelry does not do that to me. So I can guarantee that you guys are really, really going to like this if I like it. And I've been a long time customer of theirs and I, I just want to just percent stand behind the brand. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it just seems that over time their designs keep getting better and better and every time I get some new stuff from them it just gets cuter and cuter. They're my go-to place for when it comes to more dainty style jewelry and the designs are so well thought out and like I said for it being dainty it is still quality. I do find sometimes when I do get dainty smaller kind of jewelry it breaks easily not from Ana Luisa and because they do so good with the dainty jewelry. It all stacks really well together. Today I'm wearing a full getup of Ana Luisa. So I have two random necklaces that I put together and it looks really cute. And then I have my fun party earrings that I've been wearing a lot recently. So let me show you the pieces that I have. So I got this very simple pearl necklace and I like it because it runs a little bit longer but they also come with notches so you can make them shorter or longer. And then I put this one on the shortest notch and it's just a really cute little diamondy kind of necklace right here just little touches of some sparkles here and I think they look really cute together but it still is not overwhelming and then of course I have my party earrings I love these I think these are probably my favorite pair of earrings that I've gotten from Ana Luisa you can't tell me that things aren't adorable so these are my most recent pickups I will have it linked down below I definitely recommend checking them out they're currently running the biggest sale of the year right now buy one get one 60% off that's pretty dang good so make sure you don't miss it I know you will love them click the link down below if you would like to shop on to the rankings so in total I tried 14 eyeshadow palettes in October if you don't know I film these in the middle of the month so that way the palettes that I tried towards the end of October I could still play with a little bit into November to really get my thoughts on them I did actually try a little bit more than 14 but there's a couple of sets that came out together that I kind of pushed together to make my life easier but anyways let's start off at number 14 the worst eyeshadow palette that I tried this month you guys can probably guess it is the Tom Ford Soleil palette that came out for the holidays in the shade naked pink I did upload a video called products I do not recommend that you buy at Sephora this was one of them because it gives you a whole lot of nothing it literally looks like nothing on the eyes for me the only good shade in here is the glitter shade but he has this formula in a lot of his other quads if you take a look at these three and by the way my nails are chipping i don't know just feel lucky they're painted because uh, this is still a rarity <laughs> look you really 
you don't get much from these. And you know, if this palette was like $20, I'd be like, okay, it could create a nice soft look, but it's $89. And I really don't care if the intention of this palette was to be soft. It's still too soft. I mean, Tom Ford to me is the epitome of being the master of soft eyeshadow formulas where you can see that they are still sophisticated on the eye. It's still a good formula despite being soft. This is not a good formula because you don't really see it on the eye. So, uh, yeah, not for me. <laughs> Last place. All right, let's move on to number 13, another one that I've been trash talking of late. This is the Gucci Beauty eyeshadow palette, and I probably use this the most out of all my palettes this month because I've been trying to justify this palette for some reason because it is $150 and I love the packaging so much, and it literally breaks my heart that the inside of the palette doesn't match up to the outside because this is what I want my future makeup room to be designed around. I love this vintage kind of vibe here. I think it's so elegant and cool. But anyways, you get these little dinky eyeshadows and I don't know what it is about this formula. Sorry, I'm looking at the sun go down and I'm like making sure it's not too dark in my video. But anyways, I don't know what it is about this formula, but it takes me forever to get an eye look done. I don't know why, like the shadows aren't that bad, but for some reason, I just take forever to pull together a look. The shadows don't blend on like butter. There's a little bit of unevenness here. I have to keep packing in certain places that I want more intensity, and I, I it just takes a lot of work to get what I want. The mattes in here are decent. Uh, the black in here is really, really nice. The shimmers, no bueno, except for randomly the silver, which is also really nice. It's just inconsistent across the board, and I said this before, but it's not like I can't get pretty looks. I've liked the looks that I've created with this, but it seems that you can really only do simple looks with this because when you start to add four, five, six shades to a look, it's too complex for this formula to handle. It doesn't look that good. So yeah, I mean, it's the fact that it's $150, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you don't buy it for $150. Don't buy it on sale. Just, it's not good. <laughs> Number 12, I have a NARS eyeshadow duo. Normally I wouldn't count a duo as a palette, but we're just going to. <laughs> so this is the NARS Kuala Lumpur duo, and I normally really, really love their duos. And this created a nice soft look, but it was a bit too soft compared to what I've tried from other NARS duos. I think they have some really nice duos. And I did actually really, really love the look of this. I thought it was very pretty, but for some reason it just didn't match up to the quality of the rest of my NARS stuff. It's pretty, it's soft. I just don't necessarily know that it's worth the money. It's not that it's bad. It's just where this is ranking. There were so many good palettes this month that this is falling towards the back, but it's not that I dislike it. It's just a little underwhelming, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's I. Number 11, unfortunately, this is very odd, but I'm putting the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Palettes of Pearls in Cosmic Pearls in this place. And it's a shame because its counterpart, which launched a couple weeks earlier, so that's why it's not in this month, was really good. It ranked very, very high. This so underwhelming to me. The look was just kind of eh. The textures in here are just kind of eh. This shade right here was supposed to be like the showstopper and she's cute, but the other one is just so much better, so much more textured, created an all over ethereal glow, whereas this one is, it's uh, I don't know. I just was so underwhelmed with this. My expectations were set so high from the other palette in this collection, but all of the other shades in here, they're completely dupable with every Charlotte Tilbury palette that you have because it's just that warm tone colors that she kind of loves. So yeah, this is, eh. I don't really recommend it, you know? Get the other one. Okay, let's move on to number 10. This is the other NARS quad that I got to try out this month, and I really like this. This is kind of the turning point of the video, but again, with all the holiday launches where the brands seem to put a little extra oomph in the color story and the textures and the packaging, this is just where it kind of fell, but the look you can get with this is really pretty. So this is the quad in Taj Mahal. This is an older palette. It's not new, by the way. I just picked it up because I'd been 
wanting a new NARS quad and these three shades are kind of they're all right you know they do the job the background shades to this glitter shade which is really good and this is better than the glitter shade in the other Tom Ford palette that I showed you look at that this makes the look like you can't use this quad without using this palette but the look that I create from this I really love it's just a simpler palette so yeah like it but it's simple Okay, let's move on to number nine, and I'm wearing it on the eyes right now. Well, I'm wearing them. I paired them together because they're kind of the same. They came in the same collection. It would be too hard to place them in different spots because they're almost too similar. But anyways, um, I did a whole review on these one size holiday sets, and I had another set as well, but these are the Point Made eye sets. I got these sent to me, and there were two quads. I'm ranking the quads in nine place and I have a mixture of both quads on my eyes. I did film an IG tutorial so I'm gonna have Jose or my husband if you don't know Jose edit it for me so there will be a tutorial if you want to see how I got this look because it's stunning but there's a warmer quad right here which is copper cider and then the other quad that we have is golden cocoa which is a little bit more neutral and again a little bit more golden of the two I would say I prefer copper cider I just prefer the richer look that it gives but they're both kind of the same so I'm just pairing them together like I said we got a little bit of both going on right here but these are nice but again they're just kind of basic the mats in here aren't the best I do find that I have to put in a little bit of extra effort when it comes to blending the mats for today's look I did spend that little extra time so the mats aren't all that the shimmers are what's really pretty in this palette I do recommend using a finger I did use a brush today and it still worked but you really get a lot of of opacity and texture on the eyelid if you do use your fingers but I think these are really really pretty I just you know I have all of these shades so it wasn't anything too exciting for me but I do think that these make great sets so if you know somebody who doesn't have the biggest makeup collection and really gets use out of their eyeshadows and likes these more neutral but glam palettes these would make really great sets honestly they're very nice the eyeliner in here is really good but you know it's a basic and I'm not very basic <laughs> when it comes to my makeup and my makeup collection so that's where they fall but they're not bad they're not amazing quality to be honest but they're good quality and I think for somebody who just needs some eyeshadow to throw on these are really nice to finish it off the curation is really good Patrick Ta made them very wearable and they're still glam but wearable Let's move on to number eight, and this is where things start to get kind of tough. Lots of good palettes. So I'm counting these together as well because similar situation with the one size, they're kind of the same, but not. So this is from the Dior Atelier of Dreams. Is that what the collection was called? I could never get it right, but the Holiday Dior collection, and I picked up both of the quints. I'm always curious about Dior quints because they always seem to be so beautiful, but also inconsistent. So I got these to review for you guys. So we have Atelier Dore, which is more of a golden neutral. And then we also have House of Dreams, which is more of a taupey neutral. You see what I mean? That they're like kind of the same but different. Even in my review, I didn't really know which one I liked over the other because they were the same but like a little bit different. I mean, I like cooler tones, but I think I prefer the golden one. They're both beautiful and the quality on these is really, really solid. I mean, take a look at the embossments here. Pure luxury beautifulness. These are such a treat to have. It's not Dior's best formula. If you're looking for the best, best formula from the Dior line, look into their permanent quint line. Those are a bit of a step up in the quality, but these are still very good quality. I'm not disappointed with these. These are the better of their limited edition kind of quality so I don't think you'd be disappointed in that but again these are kind of boring and the only reason that I put these a little bit lower is because I know Dior can do better but I've really enjoyed my time with these I've actually created a lot more looks with these than I anticipated I created some pretty halo eyes soft everyday neutral wearable palettes really a true luxury experience I've been enjoying these a lot Let's move on to number seven. I feel like this came out a lifetime ago. <laughs> I can't believe this is in the most recent month. This is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. Well, the mini Metropolis. And I think this is a beautiful curation for a holiday look. You get the basic golden tones, all of the nice neutrals that you need to accompany those tones. And then you have a fun pop of blue where you can put it all over the lid or you can completely skip out or you can just add it as a pop on the lower lash line and a little pop in the lid. 
whatever you want. I think it's surprisingly versatile for being such a small palette. Now, most of these shades are from the actual Metropolis palette. So for me, this is my rankings. For me, I'm not as excited about this because I have all the good colors in here. I believe it was these two, right, that were not in the Metropolis palette. And one of them was in the Biba and the other one was a brown. <laughs> so um, in that way, it wasn't as exciting to me, but it's a really nice curated palette you know you can get a lot of looks from it for it being only five shades and i really do like this the quality is really nice as well so if these tones look like something that you would use you want to try out the natasha denona formula without breaking the bank i really like this one let's move on to number six this is from the pat mcgrath holiday collection so this is the eyeshadow quad in bronze borealis oh my gosh you guys were coming for my throat because I couldn't pronounce this. How do I pronounce this? Oh, we got to add on YouTube. Why did I click on the YouTube video? Borealis. Borealis. That does not sound right. Aurora Borealis. Borealis. I looked it up. I don't know. Borealis. Anyways, this one. So this is the more neutral of the quads that came out. Is my lip sweating? Anyways, this is the more neutral of the two that came out. And, ugh, the quality on this, so beautiful, thick, rich, creamy, pigmented. Anything you would want in a quad. So the quality is really what's pushing this up. But what's keeping it a little bit down towards the center here is, I mean, I have all these shades. This is, like, kind of Divine Rose 1, Divine Rose 2, all of the rose palettes that she already has in a little quad. It's not that special to me, but the quality is super duper nice. So, yeah, I mean... That's it. I don't... <laughs> it's nice. I like it, but I'm not excited about it. On to number five, we have Deep Space Divinity from Pat McGrath. This was the other quad that came out, and this one is like the one that's a little bit more unique, a little bit more fun. While I did really like the launch of these quads, there wasn't anything really super special about them. This shade's nice, but it's one of the duochrome shades that all brands tend to have, so if a brand decides they want to do a duochrome shade, it's normally this like blue-brown kind of shade with a little bit of red in there, so it's not unique in that manner and then you have a gold a champagne a little bit more of a red tone really pretty like this one better than the other one just because it's a little bit more different in the Pat McGrath line but again she really didn't bring it with these quads if you ask me I prefer the big celestial odyssey palette over these two it's like I don't have anything bad to say you know the quality is what's keeping them so high but I don't know <laughs> anyways let's move on to number four and oof, I'm starting to get excited because we have the Vizzy Art Bijouette palette this is exactly what I would wanted Vizzy Art to come out with just because they have a truly beautiful formula but they do stick on the safer side of color stories this is a beautiful jewel toned palette i mean why it's not number one is because i mean i'm not gonna dig into these jewel tones every day but i like knowing i have a busy art option for these jewel tones and you still have some very neutral shades like these four right here five actually i mean you could probably recreate the look that i have on my eyelids right now but i love these rows right Right here where you have the pops to add to these colors in your busy art collection the curation is really nice because of the variety of looks that you can get I've had a lot of fun creating looks with this one I created a rainbow look I also created a fun blue green look I'll have to play with the neutral tones I'm just not tempted to because I can get a neutral look with every other palette that I own but I think not only did busy art nail it with the color story but they also nailed it with the quality on this definitely one of my favorite launches from them in a really long time they killed it with this palette the next palette that I have is an older palette, but it's one that I dug out in my list of to-do eyeshadow palettes. I have a section in my room of eyeshadow palettes that when I don't know what to use, I'll try a new one. And this, I can't believe this was there for so long. This is a Dior Soft Cashmere Quince. So this is one of those luxury permanent quince that I was talking about that have the best formula. And it was using this eyeshadow that reminded me that Dior has a kick butt formula. Coming back from using the Atelier Collection, from the holiday stuff and I really liked it but then I used this and I was like oh yeah Dior actually does have a better formula and this is the epitome 
of the kind of colors that I love to wear really. It's these cool toned kind of neutrals. We have a little bit of extra glimmer here to give it a little bit more of a glam look. This matte is freakishly pigmented but still extremely easy to use. I mean this is, uh, I love it. This is like every day I want to use this and throw it on my eyeballs. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It actually encouraged me to pick up another quint during the Sephora VIB sale because I was so excited about this. Just an all around high quality luxury eyeshadow palette top of the line in my opinion love this okay number two this is ranking a number two simply because of how fun and unique it is this is the Danessa Myricks light work volume three palette this was a pricey one but I am more than happy with it it's really not a user-friendly palette it took a lot of playing around even for me to kind of figure this out this is not a palette to create a full look with in my opinion I do want to reach into other palettes and other shades for matte this this is kind of a palette that you reach in for for the highlight and maybe the all over lid color, but it is giving you those multi chromes all in one palette. So if you know you want to do kind of a more galactic look with shifty shades and different textures of that nature, this is the palette that you're going to grab for and you're going to have lots of options. I am so happy that Danessa put a palette out on the market that was not there ever before. This definitely is something unique really fun. I did a couple of videos using this palette. These shades look weird and white and boring, but they really have so much impact on the face and on the eyes. They're very versatile. Check out my video if you want to see what I'm talking about, but this is such a fun palette. The formulas are super nice, and I don't know, I'm just really excited about it. It brought something new to the makeup market, and this is just the kind of palette that I like to sit in my room and look at, even if I don't wear them just look at because you don't get oh gosh I'm like dropping this <laughs> you don't get shadows like that every day so just a true plus to Danessa Myricks for creating a palette that a lot of other brands were probably too scared to create or maybe it was too expensive to create I did say this in my review indie brands that hand make these shifty shades are better than the Danessa Myricks palette and the colors that she chose in that industry, in the handmade indie brand world, these aren't unique shades, but for the mainstream market, these are very unique. And I just love having it all in one place. And the last number one favorite eyeshadow palette that came out this month for me, I just love it because it's wearable, but it's still really fun for me. And this is the Vizzy Art Cashmere palette. It is like Natasha Denona Glam and Natasha Denona Retro had a baby. And those are two of some of my all-time favorite palettes. And it kind of put those two color stories together for me in a Vizzy Art format. Nice and compact, easy to customize if you wish, and a beautiful formula. So just having the combination of those color stories and also just being one of my favorite formulations on the market, it's beautiful. <laughs> you know, after coming from the Danessa Myricks palette, it's not as exciting anymore. <laughs> but I truly just love this palette so much. It's the one that I feel the most fondness for, that I want to reach for the most, but I have to tell myself no, because I have a lot of palettes that I do need to try, a lot of other looks that I do need to experiment with. But this is the palette right now where if I were traveling, I'd want to have this one with me. And there we go. Those are all of the palettes that I tried in the month of October. It was quite a big month. Last month, though, was even harder just because every single palette was so good. This one had a lot of good palettes, but I did try a lot of, like, subpar palettes as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Again, a huge thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. If you are interested in checking out any of their pieces, you can check them out down in the links below. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.